media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Ted Dixon, CEO and co-founder of InkResearch.ca, Canada's first online financial news and research service, providing insider news and knowledge to investors. His website, CanadianInsider.com, home of the Canadian Insider Club. Welcome back to the show, Ted. Jim, thanks for having me back, and thanks for everyone uh, to stopping by and tuning in. Ted, are Canadian stocks doing well, and what are insiders finding? Well, we kicked off the new year pretty up- upbeat about the prospects for Canadian stocks, and so far it's turned out to be a pretty good one. Our uh, Canadian Insider Index, which is sort of a mid-cap oriented index uh, focused on ca- Canadian stocks. It's uh, been one of the top performers in North America. It was up over uh, 8% year to date for, you know, for a broad index. Uh, the, o- the only one that's really beating it is uh, the Russell 2000 in the U.S. You know, in terms of indexes that, that look across the broad market, they're of course sectoral in- indices and specialty indices that are shooting the lights out, but just, you know, looking across the broad sector, it's been a pretty good year, sorry, broad market, it's been a pretty good year for Canadian stocks because, you know, as we suggested earlier on the year, inflation expectations were pretty healthy, and that's really good for Canadian stocks. And so, you know, this is a big sea change from the previous decade where, uh, you know, you just bought big tech stocks and rode them up and bought bonds and rode them up. New, new world, and uh, you know what we've seen to sort of verify that is finally, uh, finally, you know, we had to wait until February, but it, it showed up. The uh, gold silver ratio broke below key support around sixty nine, and uh, that was a big move because that uh, meant that silver was outperforming gold, and silver being a uh, more industrial, inflation oriented metal, and gold being more defensive metal, uh, it meant that, uh, you know, there were, uh, the sort of an inflationary impulse was there. And so, uh, you know, it's pulled back here today, today uh, being um, Wednesday, but uh, it looks like the, the trend has broken. You know, it could, have, it could always be a false move, but uh, when you look at what's happening uh, to other commodities, uh, you know, oil even is uh, defying all the gloom and, you know, moving up. Uh, despite new lockdown measures in different countries around the world, uh, something's going on, Jim, and uh, it doesn't appear to be deflation, that's for sure. It seem, appears to be uh, an inflationary impulse uh, is taking hold in the global economy. Is oil going up because they anticipate we'll actually have a driving season this summer because of the vaccines being rolled out? Well, I, I think there's a, probably a, a number of combinations. I you know, I'm pretty agnostic about the oil market. Uh, you take it for for what it is, and the trend is 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 positive. If you're a oil bull, you know, I mean, there have been a lot of sur- uh, supply uh, cuts over the past uh, few years, whether it's OPEC or whether it's just the market shutting down marginal oil producers. So, you know, there's there's some fundamentals that are on the supply side that are helping the oil price, and uh, you know, so so. I mean, just think about it. The oil price is going up, and so mu- so much of the uh, world is still in lockdown or semi-lockdown. What's going to happen? What's going to happen if uh, you know if things open up? So, uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, it's looking pretty uh, pretty upbeat for the oil market, um, and I don't see a lot of euphoria there yet. So, I mean, this is uh, this is good news for the oil bulls. I think, though, you do have to be, you have to start thinking about what this means for other sectors of the economy. Higher energy prices 
are great for oil companies, but they're not necessarily great for companies that use oil, and that that would include mining miners, you know. So I think, you know, what we've harped about on this, um, pr- people are probably sick of me saying it, but you have to watch the costs on the mining side. If you're, uh, if you're investing in a producer or, or a, a producer that's got a PEA, working on a PEA, uh, has a PEA out there and is w- looking for financing, you know, the oil price starts to keep move up, starts to be a factor, you know, and uh, it starts to be a factor on the outlook for these stocks. So, uh, that you know, there's 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 a positive sign, you know, with inflation uh, coming for Canadian stocks, but it does make the job of investing a, a lot trickier. How is silver doing? Well, silver is doing pretty good. It hasn't broken out over thirty, but it's doing better than gold. And you know, and and that's what what I'm most concerned about. Which which one is winning between the two? Because uh, you know, uh, I, I don't like personally, like I don't like to see gold winning because. Over silver because it usually means that there's sort of bad stuff happening out there. When things are going well, you you know you'd expect silver to be doing better than gold. So, from that perspective, uh, it's good to see silver outperforming on a relative basis, even if it's you know it's maybe have disappointed a few commodity bulls not seeing a break through thirty dollars yet. But uh, the important thing right now is that it's it's outpacing gold. So that's uh, that that's encouraging in terms of you know the the the, the outlook over the next few months uh that being said you know we've had a nice run here in the first few weeks of the year so you know there are there can always be some headwinds that uh slow things down and i I know and i think we're we're probably um approaching some headwinds out of the united states um just from the treasury the u.s treasury has to do a lot it is backloading a lot of their funding for their deficits and their spending late this quarter and it's just sort of Pace is starting to pick up, and so we'll have to see uh, how that hits the markets. Because you know, when the when the treasury raises money, they've got to suck that money in from somewhere, and it tends to be the fine, you know, the, fi- the financial system. So if they're very big at uh, if these are very big auctions and they suck a lot of money out of the system, you know, you that could present a headwind, uh, you know, on the margin. So uh, we've had a good run here, but let's uh, let's. Uh, Let's see how the this, these treasury auctions uh, that are going to take place, uh, especially in March. Um, you know what they what they do, but uh, yeah. So I'd be a little um, I'd be a little cautious about the outlook over the next few weeks. But the general trend has been for more inflation. So you know we you you know you you're on a flight. Uh, you can always have some turbulence. So uh, just uh, you might want to buckle your seatbelt as we head into March. We'll have more with Ted Dixon right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ted Dixon. Ted, are cryptocurrencies, things like Bitcoin, sucking money out of the market that would have gone elsewhere? Well, it's possible. They're a relatively new asset class, so they're competing uh, for dollars uh, like every other asset class. <laughs> the nice thing is, though, of course, that Jerome Powell has been increasing the supply of dollars out there. So um, maybe, you know, the pie is getting bigger. Maybe there's enough for uh, to go around uh, everywhere. So... Uh, but though it, it, things are really cooking in the in the cryptocurrency space, and what's <clears throat> really interesting uh, is what's happening in in the, sort of the, the the financial part of the cryptocurrency world. Uh, it's called you know called DeFi for decentralized finance, and uh, you know I've been following the interest rates there, and what, and there are interest rates on DeFi for for those who are not familiar. Basically, there are a number of uh, applications that you can go and you can put your 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 
U.S. dollars in the form of stable coins on deposit uh, with companies, with applications like Compound Finance, and I'm not recommending this uh, this application. It just happens to be one of many. There are many out there, um, but uh, you know you can go to their website. You can check it out. It's Compound Finance, and they they uh, basically provide a market where you can, if you want to put your money on deposit. They will give you. They will give you an interest rate, and and you will earn overnight uh, the interest rate. Or if you want to borrow, you can borrow. And there's a you know there's a, a there's a supply and demand determined interest rate, which is you know, of course quite different from what you get when you go to the bank in the United States, because it, the overnight rate is determined essentially by the Federal Reserve. So that's the first thing is that you've got uh, actual real supply and demand determining the interest rates in in cryptocurrency. Uh, uh, DeFi, and what's happened lately is that these rates have been going up. So you you've been you've been seeing uh, a fairly big increase uh, in in cryptocurrency rates uh, in the DeFi space. And I was just looking at uh, at Compound and, for example, the US dollar coin. Uh, yesterday, you could earn ten point four percent interest uh, on your US dollar coin. And if you wanted to borrow, it would cost you uh, almost thirteen percent. So, uh, you know, those are pretty high rates compared to what you see in, uh, in, on Main Street in the United States. And there's some reasons for that. You're, there's going to be, it's going to be higher to begin with because of the additional risk, right, in, in dealing with these applications. They're new. You know, they could be hacked. So there is a, there is a premium you're going to get and pay, you know, for using these applications. But the important, uh, development that, that I've noticed over the past month is that these rates have gone up. So you've been seeing an increase in interest rates, which I think you know reflects a move of money into the crypto space. But just general sort of uh, animal spirits, in the, uh, you know, so there's a, there's a combination here of of yes, speculative money going to crypto, but also animal spirits that are picking up. So you know, when you when you get away from the centrally planned rates that you you know that that you see quoted uh, on uh, business television and in the newspaper newspaper or on the websites of your bank and CD rates, which are all uh, manipulated by central banks, when you get out into a space where you've got independent economic actors transacting, providing funds and borrowing funds, you've seen an increase in rates. So, you know, what does that tell you? I think it tells you that, you know, if the Fed weren't manipulating things, we would have higher interest rates right now. So, so... You know, I, I'm not saying it would be it would be anywhere near what you've got in decentralized finance in in cryptocurrency land because again you've got additional risks there, but your trend towards higher rates I think would be the natural outcome of what we've of all the money printing that we've seen. And where does that lead us? Well, I think it leads us that you know we've got the potential for a big inflationary impulse because uh, the Fed is artificially keeping rates down. This is just going to keep going and going. I think you know uh, until eventually something breaks, whether it's the bond market, you know, where it slows everything down. You get the bond vigilantes uh, come in, and for those who aren't familiar with that term, many of your listeners, I'm sure, are familiar, but some may not be. That was uh, a couple of decades ago where you would have um, uh, the bond uh, investors uh, not liking what they see coming out of government, so they drive down the price of bonds, drive up the price of interest rates to you know, to keep the uh, policymakers in check. Well, we haven't had those for a couple of decades, at least a decade, but what if they come back? Um, they, could, they, could, they could upset the apple cart, but you know, not yet. They're not here yet, and so until we get some sort of discipline back into financial markets, in the, you know, right now the Fed is in charge, and the Fed is really um, concocting, an, uh, I think, an inflationary storm. So it's, uh, you know, it's it's going to be a fascinating year. You know, it's already been fascinating, but I think things are just going to really uh, keep keep being quite adventurous here in uh, twenty uh, twenty one. We'll have more with Ted Dixon right after this. Value from success, growth, and discovery. Golden Arrow Resources is a well-funded gold copper exploration company with proven management and prospective properties in Chile, Argentina, and Paraguay. Golden Arrow trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange, symbol GRG, on Frankfurt, symbol G6A, and the OTCQB, symbol GARWF. For more information, visit us at goldenarrowresources.com 
or call Sean at 778-686-0135. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ted Dixon. Ted, you like to leave our listeners with a little bit of an educational nugget. What is it this week? Sure. Well, this week, I just want to point out on uh, when you're following insider activity, and of course, uh, CanadianInsider.com is a great place to do that, or if, if you want to really get serious about tracking insiders, InkResearch.com. Uh, but one one uh, issue that comes up a lot, I get this uh, asked a lot, is, well, you know, why are you writing about that stock? It just had a small amount of buying. You know, uh, like small sales don't mean anything unless someone's buying $10 million worth or $20 million doesn't mean anything. Well, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've had that. And I, I and I actually, there was a, <laughs> during the, during the March meltdown, I wrote about, uh, uh actually, a, a Bank of Montreal insider who spent like a million dollars right near the bottom. And I had somebody, you know, write me saying, well, that's nothing. It's a million dollars is nothing. You can't make any, you can't make any, any conclusions about that. I go, well, you know, our signals say it's something and it was something. I mean, this, the, the it was, it was a very, uh, timely purchase, but really you're not looking as much for size, uh, in terms of what insiders are doing when they're buying. It's the context and the situation. So for example, in uh, November, we put out a report about uh, an individual at a gaming company. I'm not going to mention it, uh, but it was our it was our November I believe it was our November 30th report, our morning report. Uh, the fellow bought about thirty thousand dollars worth of stock, and again, you know, you it would be easy to say, oh, sorry, it was a November 25th morning report for those who are who are, are going to follow it, November 25th. Um, well, you can say, well, that's only thirty thousand dollars, but but there's two things. Uh, when you in this situation, uh, first of all, the stock was going up and up, and so this insider was buying when the relative resistance, uh, which means you know, uh, in terms of the the momentum of the stock, was at a at an extreme. It was a very high momentum situation for the stock, and the insider was still buying. That's very rare, where you've got any a, do- a dollar being spent by an insider in a stock that's gone up and up and up. Usually they wait for it to pull back. If they're spending any money in a stock that's going up and up and up, it's a rare situation. You take that seriously. And the other, the other point was it was discretionary. This was sort of an out of the blue buy. It wasn't sort of a, an employee plan. It wasn't the, you know, the, the it didn't appear to be. I mean, uh, it didn't appear to be the company writing him a check. I mean, it just looked like this insider went in and bought and, and the stock was going up. So that set off all sorts of, uh, uh, alerts for us. And you know that that's worked out well. That was that helped uh, that helped in the context of our signals. The stock went on to more than double uh, since November. So they won't all work out that way. Sometimes insiders buy and they're over, you know, they're overly uh, optimistic, and this <laughs> stock doesn't do so well and can even fall. So it's not a guarantee of success. But just uh, the bottom line is, don't let size be the end all and be all when you're looking at insider activity. Uh, you got to look at the circumstance and you know if the stock is going up and the insider is even buying a little bit well that's a pretty positive sign don't get uh, don't get fussed about oh whether it was you know a million dollars worth or le- less than a million dollars that that really has no no bearing on it yeah if it's you know if it's fifty dollars or something like one share or something you might want to scratch your head but uh, you know any kind of normal sort of size lot buying uh, in a stock that's going up is, is quite a positive sign it doesn't again doesn't guarantee success uh, and you know, there's you know, for there's always uh, there's always insiders who uh, view the world incorrectly and uh, and are disappointed and 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 have negative returns. But uh, in general, we found that you know don't uh, don't get carried away with worrying about how big a trade is that an insider does. You know, take a look at when they're buying and the circumstances around their buying, and 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 that can help put things in perspective. Ted, thank you so much for chatting with us. Well, thanks for having me back, Jim. My guest has been Ted Dixon, CEO and co-founder of InkResearch.ca. His website, CanadianInsider.com. If you have any questions for Ted or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. 
Find us on Twitter at Howe Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.